<laughs> ah, hit it, Dean. Broadway, 1961. You're walking down the street, catching stray notes of the classics. West Side Story. West Side Story. Brigadoon? West but hold on just a second, bucko. West Side Story closed in December last year. What you're hearing is West Side Story, the movie. Let's all go buy a million tickets each? Ah, ain't it beautiful? A distraction from all the socio-political turmoil in the US. The Vietnam War is raging, there are protests in the streets. This sex thing is really starting to catch on. Kudos to whoever came up with that. But here you are, safe behind the fourth wall. What a truly timeless show. If this was the 50s, am I right? Drag your ass into the new decade, Gramps. Nowadays, we're all listening to Elvis and pretending to enjoy Buddy Holly out of spite. That's right, musical theater is about to face its toughest foe yet. They're not children, they're not adults, they're some of a third thing. These indignant little pricks don't go to the theater. They don't have any nostalgia for the thoughties, but Broadway sure does. Then in 1967, about a decade later than it should have, hair premieres. Premieres? Pre Premieres. It has a rock and roll score, gratuitous nudity, anti-war messaging, race relations. Teens loved it, and their parents hated it, which means teens loved it. Writers realized musical theater can be high art, and that released a tidal wave of weird experimental shows like 1966's Cabaret, with its biting themes and exploration of gender and... This... Cabaret was popular enough to be turned into a movie in which up-and-coming lanky dance legend Bob Fosse's influences clearly felt. Ballet, more like ballaint. Am I right? Please go- This was a revolutionary time of artistic liberation and creative freedom, so naturally, Broadway all but shut down. Oops! Did someone forget about all the war crimes America just did? It turns out atrocities are expensive. In the 70s, Broadway was a seedy shell of itself, but artists kept trying. 1975 saw writer Marvin Hamlish recruiting dancers in order to research his new project, A Chorus Line. In the show, a group of dancers vigorously vie for a role in a musical, the role turning out in the end to be a place in the chorus, mirroring the desperate measures performers now had to resort to in real life. Speaking of desperate measures, Andrew Lloyd Webber